Welcome back to what's been shaping up to be a fairly interesting year. I'm going to start with doing a quick demo of the poker game we were building and then jump into a code review. As we start our demo of the poker game, the first thing I would like to point out, which is kind of a code review thing, is I actually have to scroll down here to look up what the entry point function is to actually run the poker game. I only really want to point this out because one of the things we're going to look at in our code review is how easy or intuitive the code is to follow. And if it takes us a bit to even run the code, maybe we should rethink how it's set up. Now we have our game running and we can see it tells us how many points we have, that our deck is shuffled, and which cards we have at the moment. It asks us which cards do we want to discard, for example, I think that's what that says. This says this is. Maybe that should be changed. One, two, three. So let's look at it, and I'm going to say I want to replace all my cards. Just good test of the game. Look at that. I got brand new cards. Still didn't help me. Spent my five dollars on the game, so I now have ninety-five points. Deck is shuffled again. And I have my cards. Let's play one more round and then we can start looking at the code that runs this game. So I have two aces. Those are really good. First three cards don't help me. So I will try to have those three replaced. And look, I got jacks or better. So we know that the scoring system's working. At least for that one score, plus five points, we're back at 95 points. The next thing we're going to do is a code review. The big reason why code reviews are really important is because while you write the code once, you're probably going to have to maintain or update or change things many times throughout the lifetime of the code. And beyond that, it's probably not even going to be you that's maintaining the code if this is a production environment. So even if you're doing it yourself, the whole reason for a code review is to essentially score how easy this code is to a new developer's eyes. During this code review, we're going to be asking ourselves questions like, how easy is the code to follow? Do the class and function names make sense? Do the variable names make sense? And do the comments help us to actually read the code? So instead of diving too deep into all of that, let's just take a look at the code directly. The first line, you can see there's an import statement where we're importing random. But before we get into the card class or any of the other meat of the code, I would expect to see some form of doc string where it would say in here, you know, what the functions are, what I would expect to see in this file, and maybe something about the author. So I'll make the same critique with the card class as I did with the overall module. And that is, we don't have a comment here that has a doc string. So we have no documentation of what we expect this class to do and what functions it should have. So let's continue reading the class line by line. And we'll see that the first line is a function declaration that we're defining a dunder init. And dunder, which is the double underscores before after, usually signifies a special function within Python. The special function here, init, initializes a card object when this class is run. And we can see that it takes four variables, five including self. But self is, because it's a class, it needs to reference itself. And it takes these four extra variables and stores them into class variables for later use. And then there's one extra variable, which we just default to false. And that's showing, which we'll get to in the next function. The next function is dunderrepr, which is what will be returned when you ask, what is this object in the interpreter anywhere in the code? What will be returned in this case is if self.showing, which if spelled out would say, if self.showing is true, return self.symbol. So basically that means the card would be face up. 
And if it's not, if self.showing is false, just return that it's a card. And while I really wish this class and these functions had a few more comments and some doc strings to make it clearer what was going on, we'll see why it's really important in the next class. The next class is deck, and you can see it inherits from object, so it's a blank object, so far so good, but we skip init, so it's still a blank object when created, it has no information, and we can see the first function is shuffle. It takes a variable times, but it doesn't even use it because the next line, it just does random.shuffle self.cards. Self.cards isn't defined because it's a blank object. And then prints deck shuffled. Well, we saw that it works in the code, but the way it's used right now is as a helper function. So this, if used directly, would cause a lot of errors. We really need to add some documentation when we go through and organize our code to make it clear how we use this, because right now this is pretty confusing. Two other things I'd like to point out about the class is how the deal function works. It just pops off the first card, so we probably should document that. And we should also probably document that the shuffle function wasn't even finished. We had the times variable, but we never even used it. Now we move on to where our deck class is being used, which is being inherited into our standard deck class. And that means that we get all of the functions from deck built into standard deck already. The first function we have in standard deck is our init, which has an empty list of cards, and then has a dictionary of our suits with their name and Unicode symbol the values with the name and numeric value, and then a fairly condensed for loop down here. It's actually a nested for loop, and this is something that we should document and have some information in here just through a couple comments to make it easier, because a lot of this is to actually create the symbol so we can then have an easy name like two of hearts when we're spelling out the name of the card. So we're just doing, you know, for name and values and for suit and suits, creating all the cards and appending them into our list. So by the end of this, we have a standard deck of cards all in our self.cards list. The next function is our wrapper and same thing, standard special function. And this will just show us how many cards are remaining out of our card. Because as you remember, in our standard, uh, in our deck class, which we're inheriting into our standard deck, we have our deal function, which just takes the first card from the deck and returns it, but it actually takes that card, it removes it from the deck. So we have a quick way that we can see how many cards we have remaining. The next class I want to look at is really simple. It's the player class. The init just creates an empty list of cards. You have a function called card count that just returns the length of that list of cards and a function to add cards. Then we get on to the meat of the code in the most important class, which is the poker score, which just inherits from objects. So it starts as a blank object and the init just takes a list of cards. And since right now we're only scoring five card poker games, if the length of the cards, if that list has more or less than five, if it's not equal to five exactly, just return error, wrong number of cards. Else set self.cards equal to that list of cards we just passed in. Then we get to the different scoring functions for our poker game. The first one is flush. A flush is when all of the cards are the same suit. And how we check that is we do a quick list comprehension and get a list of all of the suits for all of the cards we have. So we just end up with a list of suits. Then we take that list of suits and convert it into a set which removes all duplicates and then get the length of that set. And if they're all the same, we should end up with only one suit since it removed all the other duplicates, and we can return true. Else, we're returning false. 
The next function is the straight function. And a straight in poker is any time the cards are sequential. So you have a 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you can have all the cards in order for five cards. We're going to do the same thing we did with the last one, where we get a list comprehension to pull out the value we need. In this case, it's the values, and we sort them. First thing we're going to do is see if there are any duplicates, because if there's a duplicate, you can't have a straight. So it makes it really easy to see if there's any duplicates, return false. Then we can check and see if it has an odd straight. And in this case, that odd straight is using the ace as a low card. So if you have ace, two, three, four, five, the values the way we normally would look at them wouldn't be in sequential order, but it would still be acceptable in the game of poker. So we're going to return five, which is the highest card in that straight. And then our else down here, we're going to check just by taking our value and adding one and seeing if it's the next value. And we're going to do that for each one, and we're just going to check. And if all of them check out, it then returns true. So we have something that checks the edge cases, and then it just does a quick check to see, you know, adding a value to one once it's already been sorted for each one, does it make a straight? And the return value is always the highest card in that straight. Our next functions are the highest card function, which, as you see, there's a pattern here. It goes through, gets the important value we need, in this case, the values of the cards, and just does a loop to see which one has the highest value, and then saves that card off and returns it. The next function, highest count, same thing, stores off the values and then sees the count of each one, which is how many times it is duplicated. So if you have a pair, your count would be two of that card. Or if you have three of a kind, it would be three or four for four of a kind. So you have your highest count, and then you have pairs, which goes through and checks the count and sees, do you have at least two of each one? And we can see there's a four of a kind, which same thing, it checks that count and sees if it is four. We have full house, which checks to see if we have one that has a count of two and one that has a count of three. And by the end of both of them, return true, return true, else return false. And then we get on to the gameplay itself. The last thing we have in this module is a function called interpreter video poker, which is the logic behind the game. It creates a player, it gives an initial amount of points, gives a cost per hand, and has an end value equals false. While not end, so I'm guessing end is important. Print you have so many points, you remove five points per hand. You have a hand loop, which you use a standard deck and you shuffle the deck. You deal out five cards. You make them visible. So, so far we can see the comments in this function are a lot better. And this is the level we need as a minimum throughout the rest of the code. In this one, you can see there's a little bit, there probably could be quite a few more comments in here to make this a lot more readable. Then we check, you know, valid input equals false, whatever that means, but I'm guessing we'll get back to it. While not valid input, it asks us, which cards do you want to keep? So this was that, you know, one, two, three. Well, we can change that example thing we ran into earlier. But you can see we have a few nested while statements because we're using this as a live interpreter. And I think that's something that we need to document really well when we're doing that 
because some of these loops, if you put one of these things in one scope versus the other, you can break the logic in ways that doesn't seem intuitive at first unless you really know the code. So it makes it unintuitive for people to jump in without good comments or at least things pointing people in the right direction. So we'll see valid input, it would be the, you know, one comma two. So we make sure that loop works and we're doing that, splitting on commas, finding all the numbers, making sure they're the correct values, that those values make sense. And then actually go through your player list, remove those cards and actually get you new cards. So we can do that pretty quickly with that valid input. And then we do our scoring system. So essentially, let's go up to this while loop. Let's see, does end show up again? If end doesn't show up again, it's an odd placeholder. It is an odd placeholder, so that's something else I would kind of comment because you can come in here and type exit, but I don't think there's, oh, okay, type exit to quit. Apparently, I need to, you know, learn to read. So, okay, that is one of the special things. So, yeah, that totally makes sense in there. And, the, okay, so those while loops aren't bad. They just need to be commented because even, like, right now, it seems confusing. So, with all of that, aside we get to the scoring system and we use our poker score here we give it its cards and we see you know straight flush highest count pairs and then we can see down here how we check this so if it's a straight and a flush okay so if straight and flush and straight equals 14 so essentially if it is a straight flush and the highest card is an ace, royal flush. Straight flush just has straight and flush. So you can kind of see I'm using these scores. So score dot four of a kind. If that's true, if I had a four of a kind in that hand, trigger there. And we're going from the highest scoring to the lowest scoring. So you always end up with the highest scoring hand you had. And same thing, full house, checking for if you have a flush, straight, three of a kind. We're looking at that count and we're just saying, is that count three, cool, three of a kind, two pair, checking that pair number. And then jacks are better. We're just checking if you have a pair with a value over a certain amount. And it comes down to that after it scores. If you get something cool, if not... Either way, it goes back to the next step. You get your cards blanked out, prints a few blank lines, and we start this loop all over again. And this loop will keep going until the game ends with somebody typing exit or, you know, ending in some other way, closing the interpreter. Run. Run our function. And then from here, if we just keep hitting enter, you'll see eventually we'll lose our points. I mean, who knows? I might get some good lucky hands just through luck. But I have zero points. I can go into negative points. So that's something else that probably needs to be fixed. But aside from basic functionality standpoint, like all the other features are there. Overall, if I was to grade myself on this, I actually think I'd be giving myself probably a B minus. I mean, minus the fact, you know, it didn't even have like a name on anything or any descriptors, but I didn't have documentation in the sense of comments throughout the thing that would have really helped in some of the places where my code got confusing. It was all there. It worked well. It played the game. The big thing is there were a couple things like when it came to pairs the fact it was looking for pairs, not m more than two, even though it seemed like it should have, was a little weird. The while loops was a little strange. I see a lot of the list comprehensions where I'm re repeating them, so it doesn't feel like it needs to be as commented, like writing the same comment over and over again. 
but at least some explanation there because if somebody is new to code or new to that type of code, they might not recognize what's actually going on right there. But aside from that, it works fairly well. We need to put some error checking for you know negative scoring and stuff. But I think we're ready to move on to the next step, which will be cleaning up some of this code, we'll be adding some of these features, and we'll be putting this into a Python package. So we'll separate this into several different modules so we can reuse these cards and decks for other games.